It's been almost five months since Massachusetts voters said yes to legalizing recreational marijuana, and so far, the most action we've seen has been in delaying the implementation. As you may recall, 1.7 million voters signed off on a ballot measure that called for retail sales to begin at the start of next year, but a few months ago, a handful of legislators pushed that back another six months. And more recently, the Trump administration has indicated they could be another obstacle. I, as you know, am dubious about marijuana. I do believe that you'll see greater enforcement of it um, because, again, there's a big difference between the medical use that's very different than the, the re recreational use, which is something the Department of Justice, I think, will be further looking into. And since the measure passed here in Massachusetts, Westboro has voted to ban recreational pot shops and others look poised to follow. A new state committee that's supposed to get the ball rolling in all this has just formed. Joining me now are the chairs of that committee, Senator Pat Jalen of Somerville. Good to see you again, Senator. And Representative Mark Cusack of Braintree. Good to meet you, Representative. Thanks so much for being here. How much deference do you give the will of the voters in your work, Senator? I think we should implement the law except that if we see things that need to be improved, I need to be convinced uh, of any changes. So, so your default position is the law should be implemented as voted for by the voters until, you're, until someone demonstrates that there should be a change. That's the way you approach right, this. Right, and I think there are good reasons that people have brought up things to add or modify, and so we're looking at them. We've had two hearings. We'll have three more, uh -huh. and uh, we're... And we've meeting with lots of people and learning a lot about the issues. Do you start with the same presumption, Representative, that the voters got it right, and then we'll see if changes make sense, or my, just that they voted for the, the concept? The voters wanted a safe and accessible recreational marijuana market. You know, going through the ballot measure, which is now a chapter of law, mm -hmm. and going, using that kind of the parameters, and making sure we get this right. But it, it didn't, it wasn't the time to do these things? I mean, the legislature knew this was coming. Rather than the voters speaking and then you deciding if they got it right, wouldn't the right time to have done the work you're talking about? I don't mean you personally because you didn't have these positions before. Shouldn't the legislature have addressed these issues up front? I mean, even conditionally saying if the voters approve this ballot question, here shall be the rules of the road. Would that not have made more sense than changing it after the fact, Representative? Uh, you can look at that way. Uh you know, if this was simply done with the legislation filed, I know my co-chair has filed legislation in previous sessions on legalized marijuana. Just look at the two sides of the campaign. You would not have recreational marijuana legalized in Massachusetts. She, you mentioned, you, you've acknowledged that you voted yes on this thing and you have yep. filed bills. You won't tell people how you voted. Why not? No, my ballot is private. No, I understand. All of our ballots are private. You don't think the public has a right to know that somebody who's in a, a, a major funk decision-making position on what happens to this law, they should not know where you start, what your starting point is, what your personal my position is? My vote is irrelevant in that this is legal. My job here that I've been tasked with is the implementation and regulation of this law. What's it, let's talk about some of the things. I, I know you've taken testimony already. For example, I was going to say your boss. He's not your boss. The, the Senate president, my apologies. He said on a radio show a couple of months ago, uh, Stan Rosenberg did, uh, maybe we should raise the age of 25. Is that the kind? I mean, the voters voted for a 21-year-old age. I'm pretty sure the voters knew that they were voting to have a legal age of 21. So that's too far from your personal perspective. I would have, I think there is evidence that people's brains continue to mature until they're 25, but until we consider raising the age of tobacco, alcohol, voting, and military you service to 25, I would like to be convinced. Are you in the same place? Yeah, I think 21 works. How about the tax thing? I mean, I'll put up a little chart here. You know this better than anybody. The tax that's in this ballot question is much, much lower than virtually every other state that's, that's legalized. That's not true, actually. Well, how's it not true? Well, Washington is 37. We're at 12. Washington County just lowered things. theirs to 37, to and Colorado is lowering from 29 to 20. Well, it's different in different places. But it's still a lot higher than what ours is. It is, but I think four different states have adopted 15 this last year. And, and Maine, which is the closest state, is was a 10. Was it 10 or something? So I think we need to... People, so it's not a given that the tax thing is going to change? I, I think we need to... People need to think about how much it takes to um, implement the uh -huh. law. I, I, I'm not averse to taxes, as you know. I do know that. Uh, <laughs> but I do think that my main goal, besides implementing the will of the voters, is to kill the black market outright. 
we have a major market in Massachusetts. That's why I voted. So you think the tax is too high? Yes. Your point is if the tax is too I, high, too it may high, encourage that market. It will encourage, and that's why people are lowering taxes that they initially had. Yeah, uh, then I have uh, misunderstood. Are you in the same position that maybe the tax is appropriate? I, I look at the tax. It's 3.75 is the excise tax. Plus the sales tax plus the sales and the local tax, option. Plus the local yeah. option. Um, you know, the marijuana industry was behind the ballot measure, so it's no surprise to me that they are trying to keep the taxes as low as possible. And you see across the country the different rates. Uh, but as the senator said about the black market, you're trying to hit a sweet spot here. And the big question before we even get into the, into the whole tax rate and how much we try to generate is how are we going to regulate this new mm -hmm. marketplace? And that's so, a major issue. So essentially, at this stage of the game, two hearings in, there's no given. There's no guarantee that X or Y is going to change. It's still a work in progress. You're both nodding your head. You know, assure people who are sitting at home, and I have to say I'm amongst those people. I don't want to do one of those horrible people say things. I think the way the state has implemented medical marijuana is a disgrace. It's been four plus years since the voters voted much more overwhelmingly for that than they voted for this. 54 percent. That was two thirds. Uh, every county was supposed to have at least one. Fewer than half the counties have won four years later. Tell someone at home who believes that, not legislatively, but it's an intention of, let's say, bureaucrats, for example, to not implement the will of people, why they're not going to suffer the same fate this round, Senator Jalen. Well, I think that many people feel that, the, I'm sorry to say it, that the current administration has done a better job of, of implementing that law. And granted Baker license. than Patrick. Yes. Uh, that the medical marijuana law. Yes. Um, do you think my statement is unfair that there was an intention to frustrate the will of the people? I can't comment on that. What do you personally think? I don't know. You don't know. No, and I think us here, being here in this committee being created, is exactly put here to avoid those problems with medical marijuana and to work through these issues ahead of time and to truly set up a, a real regulatory system that can get off the ground and run and not just throw it to a department like DPH, who also had to scramble with all the Part other the stuff they dealt with. Yeah. Well, it, but let me ask you one more thing. I, I'm not sure of the facts right here, so I know you correct me. My understanding is the legislature in some supplemental budget approved 300 grand for the treasurer, mm -hmm. who is currently empowered with overseeing this. We'll see what the end point is to get this going. And the the administration of the fiscal arm of the governor's office is yet to pass the money along. Is that not factually accurate? That's factually accurate. But uh, doesn't that say something? Why don't they just do it? It's the law of Massachusetts. Let her get started. Well, we've been very clear from the beginning and the inception of this committee that we are looking at every part of this law. I don't know why some people thought that certain sections, like how it was written as a regulatory structure, is immune from that review. Uh, I don't see it as a, com you know, fait accompli that the treasurer is going to end up regulating this new industry. So the, the reality is no money is going to go to her until you no. guys, the legislature, decides. You say no, that it will not go until you decide who's in charge of well, this thing. It's put into an, it's called the Administration of Finance Reserve Account, and that was approved by both branches. Um, you know, okay. she's, she wants to hire an executive director, except the commission hires an executive director. So there's some steps missing here before Understood. you even get to the money. Is there anything you guys can do legislatively to insulate Massachusetts from Jeff Sessions? I mean, the people uh -huh. voted. No, I, I'm serious about that. Or is it essentially uh -huh. if the feds decide to crack down, they crack down? I think there are some things we can definitely do to alleviate the fears of the federal government. Uh, one of the things we talk about uh, is, in other states use it, is a seed-to-sale tracking system uh -huh. where you will literally get barcodes on everything, every plant. You can track this, uh, the product from you plant it in to however long. Which you think may assuage some of their concerns. Um, One in of some their way that concerns is to keep just, our products out of the interstate market. Understood. Mm -hmm. So to the extent we know what's happening. Did you ever use marijuana? Hmm? Did you ever use marijuana? Hmm? Did you ever use marijuana? Uh, unsuccessfully, I was in many, many parties and uh, inhaled a great deal and never succeeded. Did you ever use it? High. Yes. You did? Yes. Uh, good to see you both. Thanks so much. Good luck with your work. <laughs> By the way, did you want this job, either of you, or was it just I this? asked for it. Uh, nice to see you, Representative. You didn't want it, did yeah. you? An honest woman in the crowd. Good to see you both.